Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. Where we talk all things talent in Connecticut, and this is the Connecticut Boys Basketball High School Preview, where I have the head coach and first-year head coach for the Norwalk Bears. His name, Garrett Hickey, was a former assistant coach at Fairfield Prep, also coached at my alma mater, the Albertus Magnus Falcons. Coach Hickey, first off, you've been on this show many, many times, so I don't have to say anything more than, how's it going, buddy? Great. Great. I, li I like the sound of head coach Garrett Hickey. I, that, you're the first person who said that officially, so I like that a lot. <laughs> oh, really? You know what? Then I'm glad I said it first. Why not, right? Yeah. It had, had to be me. <laughs> there you go. I, absolutely. Absolutely. Albertus proud. Yeah, 100%, man. And, you know, I just want to say, I know I told you before, but congratulations, man, on getting the opportunity. I know there was a chance within the NVL that you had a shot, but it didn't happen. You know what? Things happen for a reason. I'm glad that you found an opportunity and just kind of talk to me first, man, about like when you found out that you got the job, like, was it kind of like where you got the call that you're getting elected to the hall of fame? Was it that kind of like that emotion? <laughs> I'd like to say, I know what that would be like, but I elected to it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, it was, uh, I would definitely say nice. it was like shock at first. Um, obviously like I've worked really hard to try and, uh, become a head coach um, and then like the minute you hang the phone up my mind went like three million places um, so like the first thing I wanted to you know the first thing obviously that I thought of is, is my my guys at prep and and uh, the coaching staff there and obviously you know it, it was really hard for me it was bittersweet to leave um, because I built some really great relationships there not just with the staff but with the kids and the families there and, and my heart's always going to have a special you know, spot for prep. Um, and, and luckily, you know, I'm not coaching in the SEC, so I can be, I can still be a fan of fair for prep. I'm in division one for basketball, so I can still root for them um, because there's a lot of good people over there and, and Mike and the rest of the staff there are, are good people. Um, so I let him know, obviously I let the guys know. And then it was just kind of hit the ground running and try to figure out, um, you know, I was kind of late in the game when I found out I got the job. I only had about a month a little bit more than a month before the season started. And I had to put a full staff together, all that stuff, figure out, um, you know, what, what we wanted to do and, and uh, get the land, lay of the land at the school and, and meet some of the players and meet some of the staff that works at the school. And, and it's been a, it's been a whirlwind the last month, but it's been a lot of fun and, and really enjoyable. Do you feel like in a lot of ways, it's kind of like, when you think of, and I use the term that my former teacher at Albertus talked to me about, which was the ladder effect, where every step that you take, uh, you know, someone had to help you get there. I think I talked to you about this before when I, when, you know, when I've had you on in the past, where it's either somebody, a friend, a coworker, a teacher as you were growing up. So, and what I'm, you know, bringing into this conversation is you have gone through the steps as a coach. You've gone you know, Albertus, prep. I mean, I'm sure there's other opportunities as well. Do you feel like going through the coaching chain per se, the ladder, prepared you for your first opportunity with Norwalk? Yeah, yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, obviously, I'm a big believer in, in relationships. And, you know, when I, when I first came down to Fairfield County and started coaching at Notre Dame Fairfield, that's where my like connection started. Um, the reason I got the job at Albertus is because one of our kids at Notre Dame Fairfield was being recruited by them. And that's how I met Mitch. And then I got the opportunity to coach there. Um, and then obviously, you know, moving to prep and, and uh, you know, working with Leo Redgate and then Mike Papali and the connections that they had and just meeting a bunch of people and, and you know, coaching AAU, coaching, you know, uh, clinics during the summer and stuff like that. I've just met a lot of people. and. You know, it's not like the Norwalk was the first head coaching job that I interviewed for. I mean, it's it's a process. Um, you know, I've probably went on eight or nine interviews um, in the last four or five years, and you know, and I'm a big believer in you know everything happens for a reason, and and you know you you land where you're supposed to be, and I think, uh, I definitely think it's it's, just, it's funny because my my wife started teaching in Norwalk two years ago, and now I'm at Norwalk. I, like if you had told me that I. I I don't even think I would have been like, what are you talking about? But she's now she's at a middle school in Norwalk. Now I'm at Norwalk High School. The fr some of the freshmen um, on the team were in her homeroom last year. It's just weird how like everything meshes and connects and 
and like you know like you said it's just the latter effect of each step each each year that we're doing stuff um you know it is is, a, is another step closer to where you're supposed to be you know it's a small world but it's a good world in that especially with everything as you mentioned coach uh now obviously you know i'd be reminiscent if i didn't mention about mitch who in and of itself is one of the best basketball coaches I think I've ever seen. I mean, I've told you many, many times I used to watch his practices after either before or after my baseball practices, because we practice in the gym and the way that he runs a practice, it's, it's, it's division one esque, but at the, you know, the division three level, um, when you told him that you got the job, I mean, what was, take me into that conversation because I know him as a very serious stern kind of like bill belichick we're like all right we're on the cincinnati and that's it how was that conversation yeah i mean mitch has been so supportive with with everything like um when i when i decided to go to, to prep as an assistant and then when i went on these interviews i mean he he's always there to, to help me out with with those interviews and, and, and make a phone call pick the phone up and, and call an ad or call somebody um so he was supportive in that way and then um you know, after I hung up the phone with, with Mike and told him that I had the job, that Mitch was the, the second call that I made. And he was just real excited for me. I mean, he, you know, the, the Mitch that you know, um, you know, as a coach and stuff like that, that's how, you know, that's who he is on the floor. But at the same time, he's, he's such a great guy and a great person. Um, and he was just really happy for me. And, and um, he was excited that uh, Kevin, who's at St. Joe's, that will, will, be, will be matched up together. So two of his former assistants will be, will be matched up in the FCAC, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, and, and obviously it's, you know, it's going to help having, you know, one of his former assistants at, at the high school level, just with, you know, seeing kids and, and, you know, letting them know. And I think it's really important of letting them know that, you know, division one and division two aren't always the, you know, the right spots and that there are some great division three programs and that division three is a route that is, is not just there, but it's probably sometimes most likely the best fit. You know, it's not so much where you go, but or actually, no, it is so much where you go. But it's also, too, I think where you're from is not so much as important because if you're good enough, people will find you. You know, there's a player at Masick who Masick has been producing athletes. But for some odd reason, when you talk to people, I think sometimes they forget about Masick. He's a running back and he's like a video game. I mean, I saw him against Nogatuck last week and it was ridiculous the numbers he was putting up and how he was playing. But it just goes to what I said that if you can play, people will find you. And I think, like you said, if you have the talents to do that, somebody will be like, hey, I don't care that he went to a town of 50 people. This guy or this girl can play. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, something that I've always said, um, you know, with, with my guys at prep and that I'm going to preach at Norwalk is you, you've got to go where they want you. Um, you know, obviously kids dream and kids have aspirations of playing at the division one level and that's great. And you should, you know, dream big and, and aim and aim high. But at the same time, you know, you, you, you know, it, it all depends on what you want. Do you want to go somewhere and, and sit on the bench for two years and then hopefully maybe, you know, find your, the year, but then there's also the possibility that some freshman comes in who takes that spot or do you want to go somewhere you know, where you have the potential of, of starting for four years and, and, and playing, getting a good, good education. And on top of it, being at some place, you know, not just like these D3 schools are, are small academic schools where you're in a class with, you know, 13 other kids um, where you have a little bit more attention than you would have if you went somewhere else. Now, I want to, you know, I want to dive into, you know, I know you've only you know, been with the kids for a short amount of time. I know something that was out of your control in a very serious situation kind of, you know, we don't have to talk about, it, but basically it kind of really kind of puts you, you know, welcome to being the head coach. Here's your first stress, a huge one, but things were okay. You got through it and th things hopefully will stay, you know, better off. Let's hope. Um, but I just want to dive into, you know, what kind of, what expect, you know, what expectations uh, coach do you have for this season because as you said prep Norwalk it's a little bit different so kind of just take me into that yeah I, I mean 
expectations wise for the season, we, we, we aren't really talking about that as a team. Um, something that we've just been talking about for the five days that we've been going is getting, you know, 1% better every day. Um, that's a big thing that we're diving into just because it's something that's actually attainable. Um, you know, you can actually measure that. You can actually be 1% better than you were the day before or the practice before. So we've been talking about that a lot um, with the guys and just, you know, taking it day by day, not looking at the scrimmage that's coming up, not looking at when our first game is. Obviously, you know, they are because they're excited about that kind of stuff. But, you know, just kind of being where 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 our two feet are and making sure that we're, we're focused. Um, you know, we were talking today after practice with the, with the coaches, you know, our, our first two days of practice after tryouts. I mean, the energy was absolutely amazing. Um, it was it was fantastic. And then today, you know, it was probably our first bump in the road. And some of the guys realized it afterwards. But I said, like, this is part of the, the journey. This is part of the season because, yeah, sure, as a coach, I could sit here and say our energy level should be the same every single day at practice, yada, yada, yada. And that's a great expectation to have. But at the same time, you know, these are high school kids. These are teenagers and they're humans. And the, the energy level sometimes isn't going to be where we need it to be. And that's that, and then that fix it. So it'll be a little bit better than we were the day before the next practice. Um, I said, and today at the end of practice, I said it's really easy to have high energy day one and day two because you're excited, you're ready to go. It's it's you're you know unlike last year, you're starting in December now, and it looks like we might have knock on wood, not, might have a, a regular season with 20 games. Um, you know, but what matters is, you know, when we get to practice number 20, when we get to practice number 40, are, are we able to do the same thing? What are we going to do if, you know, we have a bad loss? Are we going to be able to keep, keep that same energy? If we have a really big win, are we going to be able to keep ourselves focused on the goal of getting 1% better every day? And I think you raise a very good point, Coach, about the 1% better. And, you know, one of many coaches that I've heard that before, maybe not on that same term, but pretty close to that. And I think, as you also stated, being able to start at a normal time. And I know the season was started later because of COVID shortened season and so on. But I think, you know, and I hope that we have a regular season and I hope that the state tournament will happen and that we can get to some sort of normalcy. Um, but at the same time, coach, I do wonder, you know, how, how, you know, as the students, how are they going to be able to, and I'm sure you may not know this, but there's going to be so many factors because as we know, the vaccine, the unvaccinated, the vaccinated, you've got situations where now the stress is still going to be, are we going to have this game? Are there going to be quarantines with the opponent? And then having to make sure that you have games on backup, if you have to schedule, you know, so on, there's a lot of factors. So, you know, not to say, Hey, good luck, but Hey, good luck. <laughs> Yeah, and and we we address that um, you know as a staff and and at the beginning just saying those are all things that our guys don't have to worry about. I mean, honestly, they have so many other things they got to worry about, like school and basketball. Like you guys are kids, just worry about today and and you know let let me and the rest of the coaching hat coaching staff and the athletic director when that stuff comes up, we'll deal with it and and we'll and we'll figure out a plan for it. But as long as you know our guys are are just kind of focused on on being kids and, and having fun and, uh, you know, being ready to go. If we can go that day, then, uh, you know, I think that's, that's all I can ask for us, coach. Now let's talk about some of the players, coach, because I know you have a couple football players on your team, which must make, you know, the FCAC coach of the year, uh, Pat Miller himself, a part of the thread must make him thrilled. And again, I don't know if I told him, but congratulations. If he's watching this, congratulations, Pat. I'm very happy for you. Well-deserved. You know, I called him the Cliff Kingsbury of the FC Act for his schematic offensive wizardry. We'll probably laugh at that one. Um, but you have, you have a lot of, you have not just a lot of talent, but you have a lot of athletes. And I know you and I were going back and forth where you said you can kind of implement some of the Alberta style, which is quick, fast, up-tempo to steal a football term and kind of control almost make it like a full court game and also half court defensively on that side to make sure teams know hey we're here so you're not going to get by us yeah and, and I love the fact that we have you know multi-sport athletes I think that's a huge um, a huge thing and I'm so glad that the football players you know trusted 
me enough uh, to you know come out um, because I, I I said that to them when I met with them. You don't know anything about me, and you could have just said, you know what, like we had a great football season. Maybe you know basketball isn't isn't you know the right thing to do, and and they decided to to come out and play. And so you know we have some kids, we have some returning basketball players, we have a total of players. Um, I'm so excited about because you know I, I think that's going to really you know, you know, and in time or, you know, I would blow the whistle and maybe huddle guys up. I, I got guys who are naturally doing that already. Um, and because a lot of them played football together, um, that kind of cohesiveness and uh, teamwork is already kind of built in with them. And then at the same time, I only known them for like a, a little less than a week, but I, I, I <laughs> I haven't seen a, a group of 11 guys who are as close knit as, as this bunch. I mean, they're, they're always hanging out together. They're, they're uh, in the locker room. They're having fun. They're having fun when we're practicing, which is exactly what I wanted, what, what we want to do. And, and mm -hmm. um, I, as of right now, I, I just, I consider myself really lucky because I'm, I'm enjoying every minute of it. And I think that's the biggest thing too, coach, is that, I mean, obviously you could be, you could be coaching a bunch of babies and you'd find ways to be able to make that work. You would enjoy it. And, uh, you know, it, it's great to hear that you are loving, even though it started out as a stressor, that you're able to, you know, and I think, again, you being a first year head coach and having that label, sometimes it could change, you know, I know people in the past who, you know, once you put a different tag on them and it doesn't say what they were before and, once you put head manager or you put associate, whatever they change, and then you start to really see their true colors. And I think for you, coach, has there been any sort of, uh, because even though you are the head coach, no one's taking that away from you, but are you going to, I don't want to say try, but will you be willing to stay as who you are and not try to be head coach Garrett Hickey, but be coach Garrett Hickey? really good question I actually when I came home today I, I told my wife the only difference that I can point out as of right now is that I'm more worried about a lot of stuff um you know which I think is just a job of, of a head coach but like during practice it's like not I don't want to say I live and die with like everything that's going on but it's just like I have so many emotions that go up and down it's like wow that was really good we're going to be really good it's like wow that was terrible we might not win a game and and it's like these thoughts that go in my head that I need to like work out and make sure that, you know, they don't, you know, affect who I am, but at, at my approach to everything and my approach to, to my relationships with the players and my approach to how we're going to play and what we're going to do is, is, is very much just. Hickey, it's just coach Hickey. Um, and I, that, that's really important to me to, to stay who I am because that's what makes me, me. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, for, for better or for worse. And I'm sure that I will make mistakes this year because that's what happens. Um, and I'm going to learn from them and that's great. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to have some really high moments where I'm like, wow, I did a really good job there. Um, so it's just kind of being able to stay even keel and, and understanding that, but at the same time, you know, who I am. All I can say is as far as the roller coaster ride is concerned, uh, I know that feeling because I'm a Cowboys fan. So it's always like this, especially this season over the last four weeks, it's been a lot of this, some of that, and then it gets yeah. bumpy in between. But, um, but anyway, back to basketball, but coach, it's, it's great to be able to have you on, uh, but, you know, before I let you go, a couple of things really quick for people who may not know and have kept track of the divisions, one, two, three, four, and five. I think that started 2017, 2018, when they went to the divisional side, uh, no more class L, M, uh, you know, as double L, whatever the case may be. Um, you're in division three. And I was going, and I was talking with you before we started this division one's pretty tough. I mean, as you know, you were in it, you, we almost had you, if it wasn't for COVID could have had you back again on the radio against one of your favorite teams, Sacred Heart again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But, yep. <laughs> uh, you know, that would have been awesome to be able to, and I could have seen you in person, would have been lovely, would have been great, but dang COVID, whatever, <laughs> it can be. we move on from it. But you being in division three, man, there's a lot, there's a lot of good programs. I think they're all good, but 
it's a it's it's winnable because there, I don't think there's a team that stands out yet. Maybe there will be at the end of the season, mid season, whatever. But there isn't that. Oh, that team's going to win it all, or that team's going to be. Nobody really knows. So that's perfect for you guys. Yeah, I, I mean, I I think that the the, the biggest thing is, is obviously getting eligible to be in the in the state playoff, and then you know w- once you're there, if you're playing basketball the way you want to be playing basketball, the rankings really don't matter too much um, because everyone, like I said, it's weird because everyone's from different conferences. They've played different opponents. So if you can get there and, and you get a, um, you know, a slot in the bracket, you, you know, you've got a shot and that's really all you can ask for. And then after that, you're just playing. Um, so, so like for us, we're not going to really pay attention to, to, the, to that. Um, you know, we're not going to really pay attention to the, like the FCX standings or anything like that. We're just going to, you know, take it one game at a time, one day at a time. And, and, you know, we'll, we'll see where we, where the cards lie at the end of the day. Now, what kind of team, and I hope I have an opportunity to be able to either broadcast or catch a Norwalk game. Uh, what kind of team can people expect either if they're broadcasting, they're watching, they're talking with their buddies, they're watching on social media. What can they expect from a Garrett Hickey first year head coach? You're, you're going to be hearing that a lot. First year head coach with the Norwalk Bears. Yeah, I think it, it comes down to two things. I, I think you're going to see a team that, that plays with a lot of energy. Um, and you know, we have 13 guys on the varsity team, and, and all 13 guys are going to play. Um, that's why they're on the team. Um, so every, and they all know that that creates a certain sense of buy-in from everybody knowing that they're all going to have a role. They're all going to be in, getting their opportunity in the game to play. Um, and then the second thing is that we're just going to play a really fun style of basketball. Um, you know, it because you saw how Alberta's plays and, and you've watched those multiple games, um, and how they play, but it's, it's fun. And the, the reason why I'm bringing it to, to Norwalk isn't just because I know it, it can be successful and that you can win a lot of games doing it that way. The probably reason one B that I'm bringing it over is because it's fun. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, I, obviously we want to win. We want to be successful. Uh, you know, hopefully if we can win, um, you know, more games than we lose, that's great. But at the end of the day, we want these guys to, to have fun when they're in practice and have fun while they're learning how to play and, uh, have fun when we're playing games and then whoever's coming to watch them, whether it's their parents, their siblings, their um, fellow students, and they're also having fun too, because that's going to create a certain amount of energy that we want um, to build a program uh, because obviously our eyes are set on this year, but at the same time uh, as a first year head coach and someone who doesn't have aspirations of going back to the college level, this is somewhere that I want to be for a really long time. And so this is like the first step in building something that hopefully is going to be really special. Gary, I couldn't be happier for you. And, you know, I wish you nothing but the best of luck with your, you know, first year with Norwalk. And, you know, I just, again, I may sound biased. I don't care. But I just hope that it's a fantastic season for you. You deserve it. And I know the players are going to love you. And I look forward to seeing the success over the course of the season. I really do. Well, I I appreciate that. and, and, And thank you. And at least I know now that we have one fan going into the first game so that that's big time that's good hey first fan and first per well, first fan and then also first person to say hey uh first year head coach for garrett hickey how about that yeah i love it i might have to make that my voicemail message now <laughs> oh well i don't want to make your wife mad because i'm sure yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. but hey man definitely stay in touch absolutely thanks for having me that wrap things up in the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. Our CT stands for Connecticut Talent. I'm on our journey to find them all. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody, and be well.